This tiny video camera is the absolute gold. I never expected I'd love it so much. When a friend of me sent me the release video of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, I wasn't convinced however in how I could fit this tool into my workflow. I also knew that I'd be getting the iPhone 16 Pro in September when it releases and because the iPhone 16 Pro and even the 15 Pros already can shoot in log for video which is absolutely insane, I didn't really think I needed the Osmo. But the more I researched about the Osmo and the more I compared it to the iPhone, the more I got convinced. In this video, we'll be discussing how I fit this Olmo Pocket 3 into my workflow, how it compares to the iPhone, the best settings to get amazing cinematic footage, and the best accessories that you can get for the Osmo Pocket 3. For me, it's the perfect behind the scenes camera. If I'm out with my fiance or some of my buddies and I want to ask them for some help to capture some footage, it's way easier to let them control and to take great footage with the Osmo Pocket 3 compared to having an iPhone because it's not stabilized of course even though the footage is pretty stable or compared to a pro camera because they won't know or they probably won't know how to handle a professional camera. And I can easily track any subject by double tapping on the screen and just look at how good the active track of DJI actually follows the subject. I feel like the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is hands down the best vlogging camera on the market because of the auto tracking feature like I just mentioned and also because it connects flawlessly with the DJI Mic 2 which is absolutely amazing. I'm actually using a DJI Mic 2 myself over here. The benefit of this DJI Mic 2 is that you are always going to have good audio because you have 32 bit float audio in this little mic and what it does is while I'm recording on my camera, the audio track actually captures on my camera itself. But the DJI Mic 2 also records a 32-bit float track internally on this mic. And because of this, you have way more flexibility to play with your game in post. So let's say that you're recording footage that's way too loud or way too quiet then you will always be able to recover this. And even if you don't get the DJI Mic 2, the internal recording of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is really good as well. This is what the audio sounds like coming straight from the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Test, one, two, three, test, one, two, three. And this is what the audio sounds like coming from the DJI Mic 2. So the DJI Osmo Pocket 3's internal mic is pretty impressive, isn't it? It's also the perfect camera for B-roll and especially when I'm out on the street and I just want to take my Sony a7C II with a tiny prime, I could easily fit this Osmo Pocket 3 into my tiny sling bag and capture an entire YouTube video with this setup, which is absolutely crazy. And I can even bring this entire setup to my friends, to my family, basically everywhere without bothering anyone because I have this huge camera kit with me. And because this camera is pretty small and actually looks pretty funny, people are not going to be bothered when you're actually taking videos of them. So that's another benefit as well. It also has super fast charging through USB-C. This is why the Osmo Pocket 3 is actually better than the iPhone in lots of regards. We have no insane lens flaring because it's pretty bad on the iPhone. It's easier to keep the 180 degree shutter rule into account when making videos because if you want cinematic footage, you want to have a frame rate of let's say 25 frames per second or 30 frames per second. And when you're using this frame rate, you want to use double the shutter speed so you have natural motion blur in your footage. But in order to keep your shutter speed that low, you have to use a variable ND filter. But I feel like it's more of a hassle to use on your iPhone because you have to put a case on there and then a pretty big ND filter. While on the Osmo Pocket 3, you can simply attach a variable ND filter to its magnets, which you can attach super easily. So that's huge plus. But depending on what you're using the camera for, you don't have to keep your shutter speed double the frame rate. It's just advice that I give to you. And it's basically how I shoot all of my videos as well. By the way, I shot a cinematic video with the Osmo Pocket 3. And if you'd be interested in that, you can check out my video over here. 
Ah oh, no, it's this side. Shit. <laughs> the iPhone or other good phones which can shoot log and raw has the advantage of being able to shoot at different focal lengths because of all the different lenses. But there is also the downside that you have to attach an external SSD or SD card to your phone which adds some extra bulk. While in the Osmo Pocket 3 you can just put a micro SD card in there which is awesome. And the file sizes of the iPhone's log footage is also pretty big because you're shooting in progress which the files are just huge, okay? To shoot the best cinematic footage, like I said, you have to use a shutter speed that's double your frame rate. I also reduce my sharpness to minus two, I think, because these kind of tools usually over sharpen your footage and that's something that I don't like. I usually keep my ISO at auto, especially when I'm vlogging, and I only change this when I'm in a certain scenario and I want to expose for the highlights or the shadows. And depending on my needs, I change the follow mode of the gimbal, but I usually leave that follow and I have the setting, the tracking of the gimbal set to the lowest amount. So whenever I turn my gimbal or I move it upwards or downwards, it tracks it pretty slow and it's more cinematic. But obviously when you're tracking faster subjects, you want to change that tracking speed to the highest amount. I'm using the variable ND XMIS filter of Freewell. And even though this variable ND filter is super useful, you do get some bad vignetting over here in the corner and down here. So that's something that I always have to correct in post, which kind of sucks, but I can just easily do that with some masking in DaVinci Resolve and copy that setting to all of my other footage. And it's not that noticeable at lower stops, but when you're using your variable ND filter or you are using the 6789, then it's going to be pretty noticeable. I also got this magnetic attachment through which you can attach the Osmo Pocket 3 basically everywhere that's magnetic or metal. So that's absolutely amazing as well. I don't have it yet, but I saw it through a video of Philip Scrubba and it was a super good tip and I ordered it from AliExpress so I can't wait to receive it. Then obviously also the DJI Mic 2 which is absolutely amazing and I also got this little tripod from Insta360 from back when I had my Insta360 X3 but I kept a tripod because it's actually really useful, it's really tiny and it can easily fit into your bag. So if you're considering to buy the Osmo Pocket 3, I would absolutely recommend you to do that. I would also recommend you to get the Creator Kit, which includes the DJI Mic 2 and the extra batteries and the other accessories. Honestly, I never expected to love this tool so much and without exaggeration, this is my best camera purchase of 2023. By the way, if you want to support your boy and you want to achieve similar color grades to your videos, you can get my LUTs or power grades in the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy one of these videos as well. Con out. Peace.